Hi everyone, welcome to this class where we are going to be looking at reflection by spherical mirrors. So I'm sure you have seen reflection by a plane mirror where you guys, you know, when you uh, comb your hair in the mirrors, so that is a plane or a flat mirror. But here we are going to be more focused on reflection of spherical mirrors, which means curved mirrors. And you guys know what are the two important spherical mirrors or the two curved mirrors? concave and convex mirror so make sure you guys watch those videos we have very interesting videos on that and i'm going to go through the important details in this class and in other another class we are also going to be doing the ray diagrams in the next class so all the details of how to draw the diagrams i'll also talk about in the next class so make sure you guys watch the previous video and definitely this class is going to be a very important revision of this topic so let's get started now before I begin, I just want to say do check out the other courses on our website. You know, we have physics, chemistry, biology and maths for CBSE class 8, 9 and 10. So guys, if you haven't taken the other courses, do take them and please do share it with your friends. For ICC students also, we have physics, chemistry, biology and maths for classes 8, 9 and 10. Once again, do share out our courses with your friends. And if you want to learn coding, we have Java coding, we have Python programming. So we have these excellent coding courses for you. And we also have physics and chemistry for the Cambridge IGCSE, which is the international board. So make sure you have shared our courses with your friends. And also you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. We also have our Facebook and Instagram page. Uh, it's called Manocha Academy. We keep posting interesting content there as well. So make sure to follow us there. All right, with that, let's get started. So let's start off with a very simple puzzle what goes through water without getting wet so what is your answer going to be here what do you guys think what goes through water without getting wet so we can see the correct answer here is going to be light even sound absolutely right what can go through water light sound without getting wet why because these are not matter these are forms of energy so they can pass through water but they don't get wet and of course we are going to be dealing with a lot of light today with reflection of light topic very good Inyan Ramraj is also saying radiation excellent yes because light is an electromagnetic wave it's like a form of radiation so when we talk about light let's understand this concept of ray and beam of light very clearly okay uh, like you can see the light is switched on in your room uh, or if you take a uh, lamp or a torch so a simple example is if you take a torch like this have you guys seen this you can see this kind of beam what we call you know like this kind of layer of light okay so that is called a beam of light or when you you see the vehicles the, the bikes and the cars you can see their beams especially against the uh, in the pollution or the dust the beam is more clearly visible so this is what we call as the that spread of light right this column of light that comes through is called the beam of light now when we talk about the beam we can imagine that the beam is made up of many many thin lines of light or what we call as a ray of light now how do you understand a ray if you imagine you take this uh, torch and you cover it with a black paper so you cover the torch with a black paper and there is a tiny hole over here there's a there's a small tiny hole here so then you can imagine this kind of line of light is coming out through this tiny hole okay and this is what we call as the ray of light what is the thickness of this ray or if I ask you in mathematics what is the thickness of a line does a line have a thickness no it's absolutely right it, it has a length but no thickness same way ray has no thickness so it is sort of an imaginary concept right you can't really see one single ray so even if uh, some of you might be thinking okay what if I talk about a laser pointer does a laser pointer throw a ray of light or a beam of light if you take a laser pointer will it throw a ray of light or beam of light Again, it is very thin, but even that thin thing is a beam of light. Very good. It's a beam of light. Absolutely right. Made of many, many thin rays. Okay. So it is almost, you know, technically impossible to get a single ray. But by drawing this line, it makes the concept easy. Considering right as a ray. And we know light travels in a straight line when it's going in one medium. 
so rectilinear propagation of light means we are talking about a straight ray thin line of light and beam is a collection of many rays so you can see that beam is made up of many rays it's a collection of all these rays so please keep this important concept in mind rays like this line of light and we always make it uh, travel in a straight line and this is a collection beam is a collection of the rays how do we know we are dealing with a ray or a beam normally when you have a light source you will automatically have a beam but we consider some parts of it or we consider a line of it so a ray so as we will see in the ray diagrams we consider the like you know the extreme ends so if you talk about this beam if I consider this top ray and the bottom ray right so I can understand there is light in the middle so there to make it easy we have considered only two rays you can consider three four rays actually a beam has how many rays can you guys tell me a beam is made up of how many rays one two three four how many what do you guys think basushi has the correct answer ishan has the right answer rohit aditi shukla ghost rider please change your name to your real name shorya gupta vijay lakshmi un yes uncountable absolutely right the correct answer is infinite or uncountable a beam is made up of many many lines or rays of light okay so beam is infinite or uh, infinite rays beam can be divided into three types of beams you could have rays like this where what do you see over here here you can see that all these rays are parallel to each other so this is what is known as a parallel beam where the rays of light are parallel to each other now you could have that maybe the rays of light are coming out of this point they are emerging from this point and spreading away so what do you call this type of beam where the rays of light are spreading away so when we say spread we use the word diverges ok very good so this is known as a divergent beam and when the rays are meeting at a point so if you have rays of light going and meeting at a point here then what do you call this kind of beam so again it's a beam because a beam is a collection of one or more than one rays right actually infinite rays but we consider for simplicity we consider a few so if we consider again beam is a collection of rays so here what we can see that they are meeting at one point so this is called a convergent beam because we can say or converging beam right we can say it converges to a point so diverging means spreading away converging is the opposite rays of light meeting at a single point so now let's talk about uh, reflection of light because we're going to look at reflection topic what is the meaning of reflection of light so you all of you know a mirror and what is the definition reflection is the bouncing back bouncing back of light rays after hitting a surface just like if you take a ball and you hit it on the wall it bounces back same thing is happening here when light rays are hitting a mirror surface so when light rays are coming like this they are hitting a mirror surface they are bouncing back from it right so they are hitting and bouncing off it so if you draw it over here when light rays hit a mirror surface so what will happen these light rays will bounce off right so they'll bounce back so they'll not go through because a mirror is opaque it is not transparent so light is not going to simply go through the mirror it is going to bounce back from the mirror so it's going to go like this so this is the meaning of reflection of light and mirror we always draw it like this we draw a straight line and these dash these dash lines means this is the back of the mirror this flat plane side is the reflecting surface of the mirror so remember the laws of reflection you have studied this in the lower classes as well that what are the laws of uh, reflection the incident ray the, there are two laws right first law and second law the first law says the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie on the same plane first law is the little difficult one let's understand it okay so what is happening here the ray that is falling on the mirror so here i've taken a simple single ray right not a beam i've just taken one ray here when it is falling on the mirror this is called the incident ray because it is one which is incident on the mirror so this is my incident ray 
and you know what happens when it hits the mirror it's going to bounce off it right so this will happen something like this here and we always draw these arrows please remember drawing the arrow is very important in fact my physics teacher used to give us zero if he had a ray diagram without arrows because like you know in mathematics ray has a direction so here we are showing the direction of the light here you can see the light is going downwards after reflection it bounces off so make sure you guys draw those arrows not just simple lines right ray we draw it always with the arrow so this is the incident ray after reflection what is this ray called obviously this will be called the reflected ray and the normal what is the normal here normal means it's it's not a ray but it's an imaginary line that is drawn perpendicular to the mirror normal is an imaginary line drawn perpendicular to the mirror so let's draw it so normal will look something like this an imaginary line drawn at the point of incidence and perpendicular to the mirror so something like this this is our point of incidence where the incident ray hits so all of you can see and we can label this normal as n n dash and let's call this the normal i have shown it with the dotted line because it is an imaginary line now what is our first law saying the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal all lie on the same plane this is the thing that confuses most students where is this same plane here first of all what does a plane mean here we are not talking about the aeroplane right what is a plane plane in mathematics or physics means a flat surface right so just like if you see your table surface or your laptop or you know tablet that plane is the flat surface or so the floor here right plane so can you guys tell me where is this flat surface that the first law is talking about the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence so point of incidence is this o here so point of incidence o okay so where do they lie on the same plane is the same plane the mirror do you guys think the plane is the mirror here yes or no what do you guys think if i label the mirror as m m dash is that my plane see the first law doesn't even talk about the mirror otherwise they would have said mirror right so look at the law it says the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie on the same mirror they would have written no they said same plane so plane is not the mirror here then where is the plane so the question is where are they lying on so just like when you are sleeping you lie on a bed right so bed is your plane it's your flat surface you lie on the bed and sleep here where is the incident ray the normal ray and the reflected ray lying where are they lying where is the where is their bed you can see this flat surface very good basically the digital board here right or if you draw this diagram on your paper it is your paper your copy right that paper that is the flat surface so basically when we are talking about the plane it is this whole area this is our plane this thing right because can you see the incident ray the normal and reflected ray are all lying on this flat digital board what does it mean that they are not they, they are in the same plane is it that incident ray is like this and reflected ray is coming out in 3d you know coming out of the digital board no it is lying on the same flat surface normal also is drawn on the same flat surface it is not outside correct so this is very important concept that this is the plane here okay so first law is done let's look at the second law which is thankfully much simpler than the first law i could never remember that whole sentence you know incident ray reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie on the same plane too many words there but now i hope you have understood it now let's look at the second one angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection okay one very important thing is normally when we measure angles in geometry we measure like this right but not in physics angles are measured with the normal okay so when we are talking about the angle of incidence here the angle of incidence is going to be this angle the angle between the incident ray and the normal and i'm going to mark it as i so this is my angle of incidence i and then the reflected ray and the normal so this is going to be my angle of reflection r so the second law is basically telling us angle i 
is always going to be equal to angle r never slightly less or more always equal which means if you measure this with the protractor so let's say you take a protractor here do we have a protractor here there you go so if you take a protractor and you measure this angle so how will you have to measure it you'll have to place it against with the normal then when you measure this angle okay so this measure is going to be exactly equal to this measure here see let's say it's 46 or 50 approximately right so if this is 50 degrees this is also going to be 50 degrees clear so you always have to measure the angles with the normal this other angle is actually called the glance angle okay the angle made with the mirror but remember angles are always measured with the normal so if this is 50 degree this is 50 degree if this is 40 this is 40 if this is 30 this is going to be 30 angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection here what is the angle of incidence and reflection in this case so suppose we have a ray of light which is falling directly on the mirror so what do i mean by directly that means perpendicular so let's say this is 90 degree can you guys work out and tell me what will be the angle of incidence and angle of reflection here in this case so let me remind you again angle of incidence angle of reflection is always measured with the normal so whenever you're talking of angles first thing you do don't be lazy draw the normal so everybody draw the normal here and the answer will stare back at you so what is the normal normal is going to be again imaginary line drawn perpendicular to the mirror so will you guys agree is this not our normal n n dash so normal is the incident ray is actually along the normal so what is the angle between the incident ray and the normal and reflected ray will again be once it hits like this you know the reflected ray is going to go back like that okay so what is the angle between the incident ray and the normal we can clearly see angle i is going to be zero degrees and by second law of reflection angle r is also going to be zero we know if it hits like this it's going to go back so the angle between the incident ray and reflected ray is zero uh, sorry angle between the incident ray and the normal is zero and we always measure with the normal not with the mirror glance angle is 90 degree this angle is actually called angle of glance or glance angle okay that is 90 minus the incident angle or 90 minus the angle of reflection for the reflection case so here it's going to be both zero degrees so now we have done the basics of you know what is beam of light ray of light and all the uh, reflection basics now let's look at spherical mirrors and we are going to take a practical example of a spoon so i would encourage you that after this class when you guys are having dinner maybe i also do is i'm going to pick up the spoon and please take a look that when you look at this side of the spoon the front side and the back side look at how you look in the spoon it's actually quite funny right so you'll see in some cases you are looking inverted and you can try moving the spoon so you take the spoon move it forward backward and see how you look there similarly here you know you try inverting the spoon and seeing how you look at behind it and you can see that the spoon and take a nice big shiny spoon right and spoon is a reflecting surface okay and these are basically curved mirrors so previously in all the discussion we did these were all plane mirrors flat these are all plane mirrors now we are going to the interesting topic of curved mirrors also known as spherical mirrors what is the meaning of a sphere spherical means sphere sphere means like a ball okay so what is happening here but where is the ball here this is a spoon actually the spoon is like part of a sphere so if you think about it why is it called a spherical mirror because it is part of a larger sphere so as if this curved surface has been cut off from a sphere similarly here if you take this as if this curved surface has been cut off from a sphere can you guys see that so that is what we call as a spherical mirror now there are two types of spherical mirrors here that is why spoon is a very interesting example if you look at this part right so when the spoon is curved like you're going into this cave right what is this type of mirror called when you're looking at the front part of the spoon with which you pick up your food not the back part what is this type of mirror known as what do you guys think very good very good and the 
and the very simple way i remember it is it's like this hollow curved part where you can enter it right as if you're going inside a cave right so you're going inside this cave so this is called the concave mirror so this reflecting part is called the concave mirror and if you flip the spoon and you see yourself at the back of the spoon you can see this is bulging outwards right now you can't enter the cave because it bulges outwards so it is bulging like this this is called the convex mirror so spherical mirrors are uh, categorized into two types concave and convex remember spherical mirrors are the curved mirrors they are part of a larger sphere they are not flat they have to be curved so we use our mirrors in our daily lives right all the time so there you can see and you guys have probably seen this video if you have not please watch the other videos also given here uh, in the course here so can you identify what are the different types of mirrors here so when we comb our hair uh, this mirror that we are using what is this type of mirror first one is definitely a plain mirror excellent how about this one this is famously known as a shaving mirror of course you can use a plain mirror for a shaving mirror but normally this one which is a shaving mirror or a makeup mirror the advantage is so there you can see i am you know uh, trying to shave here so the advantage is you see a magnified version of yourself okay you, you look larger in the mirror so that makes it very easy to shave because you know you can uh, uh, shave carefully and see yourself clearly and it is also used by for makeup or uh, definitely by you know makeup artists because uh, uh, it is uh, they see a larger version of the face right so this is called a makeup mirror and what type of mirror is this very good the answer is this is a concave mirror concave mirror gives a magnified version so this answer is going to be concave mirror and this last one that you see you have seen this uh, at uh, you know street intersections or in parking lots you have seen this kind of mirror the advantage is it gives a greater field of view because it is curved bulging outwards so it gives a greater field of view you are able to see more uh, and it is curved outwards this is a convex mirror so there you can see all these types of mirrors plain mirror flat mirror and these two types of spherical mirror concave and convex they are being used all the time in our daily lives in practical things and so i would highly encourage you to look around you know whenever you see these types of mirrors sometimes it may not be obvious because you know the curvature is very less it's slightly curved for example you know in the uh, in the cars or vehicles the rear view mirror is only slightly curved it looks like a plain mirror but it is actually convex for greater field of view so i would highly encourage you to look around and you know and you can see that in my videos as well but try to spot what different types of mirrors are being used in your daily lives because the more you connect things the better you'll remember things so why use this different types of mirrors the reason is the action is different what do i mean by that if you take a parallel beam of light and throw it on a plain mirror what happens to it so here you can see there's a parallel beam of light falling on a plain mirror so after reflection this beam just reflects off like this so you can see the parallel beam remains parallel right so this becomes it remains parallel even after reflection for a plane mirror now if you take a concave mirror so again remember this one is a plane mirror this is a concave mirror and here you have a convex mirror so what happens here if you throw a parallel beam of light on a concave mirror what's going to happen these rays will finally meet at a point so you can see that they will converge to this point so what this spherical mirror or the concave mirror does is it takes the parallel beam of light and converges it to a single point what is this point known as you guys might know about it just like the parents say tell us right focus on your studies focus focus on your studies so here this is the focus exactly because all the light rays are focused falling on one point you know so this is the focus and this is basically you can see that concave mirror has a converging action it is a converging mirror because remember we talked about light rays when they meet at a point we say they converge so you can see the parallel beam of light after reflection they are meeting at a single point which is called the focus so this mirror is having a converging action it's a converging mirror and what about this one the parallel beam of light when they fall in a convex mirror so how do you draw this concave and convex how do you know the difference when you draw this curved thing 
this dash 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 is basically the back of the mirror. So this is the reflecting part. Same way here, when it is turned like this, this dashed portion is the back of the mirror. This is the smooth reflecting part. So when parallel rays are falling here, what happens to them? These rays actually end up moving further away. So after reflection, this is what happens to them. When they hit the mirror, they move back further away. They spread out. And if you trace them back, you can see that they will meet at a point which is also called as a focus. Which it's a virtual focus because it's behind the mirror. So this is what a concave mirror. Can you see the difference? Here it is converging the beam. Here when the rays of light hit, the beam spreads further. So this is in fact a diverging mirror. So this is a very important slide because it summarizes the difference of action of the three mirrors. We are throwing the same thing, parallel beam of light. This one, after reflection, the parallel beam remains parallel. Here, after reflection in a concave mirror, it converges it to a single point. So it is a converging mirror. This one diverges it away. And if you trace it back, it meets at a point behind the mirror. So convex mirror is diverging. Please remember this because sometimes there's confusion. You know, we mix up these two or we think uh, this, one is this one is converging, this is diverging. So please draw these ray diagrams and yes, keep your pen and paper ready and make sure you are, when you're drawing it, see I've drawn all the arrows as well for the rays. Very important to do that. Great question by Madhav that why did I use, so uh, why did I use dotted lines here? Because these rays are real light, right? So these are real rays of light. But when these rays are hitting, this is the real light. This is just imaginary lines. Because they appear to meet, the ray cannot go through the mirror. Why? The mirror is not transparent. It is opaque. So these are basically your, uh, they appear to be coming from this point. Does that make sense? Okay. So one very important thing, because this will come very useful in the next class when we do ray diagrams, how to draw these concave mirror diagrams and convex mirror diagrams. Of course, you can, you know, just draw you can draw it roughly by just taking a pencil and you know just doing an arc like this. But even better thing would be to use a compass. So when you're drawing this mirror, better you use a compass and put you know your compass point, let's say over here. So put your compass point here and then draw this curvature using your compass instrument. Okay. So when you put it like this and draw this curved thing, do you guys know what is this point known as? This is called the center of curvature because it is the center of this big circle or sphere, right? If you think in 3D, it's a sphere. It's the center of this big circle. So that is why it is called center of curvature. So you put the compass at the center and draw this curved arc, right? So don't make it very too much curved. It should have a certain that will come by practice, you know. So have this kind of curvature. This is your center of curvature. And then basically this will be your focus. The focus is exactly at the midpoint of the this line and this center of curvature. So what is this line known as? So this is your concave mirror. This line that we draw through the center of curvature passing through the center of mirror very good. This is called the principal axis. And where this thing meets is called the pole of the mirror. Right? So that center of the mirror is called the pole. Focus is exactly between the uh, pole and center of curvature. Now, smart way to draw this is that since you know that this is exactly the midpoint. So for example, if this is, you know, this is three centimeters between P and F, C and F is also going to be three centimeters, correct? Because focus is exactly at the midpoint of the pole and center of curvature. Focus is the point where the rays will converge for a concave mirror. So what is a smart way to draw this is that you first decide your, uh, this, this is called focal length or you first decide this distances between these two. You can take any convenient thing, two centimeters, two centimeters or three centimeters, three centimeters. So what you do is, using your ruler. So take your ruler like this and measure these distances. Okay. 
So measure this distance. Let's say it's three centimeters on your ruler. So this zero to three. This is three to six. So mark these points first. Then you take your compass and then you draw the arc. So that way you are guaranteed that your focus is exactly in the middle. Okay. So this is very very important. If your focus is not exactly in the middle. your ray diagram will go completely haywire it will go completely wrong so this is a very important trick that rather than starting with the arc you first measure these distances make it convenient good question how big should you do it should you make it 40 cm no your it won't fit your page you can do any convenient thing 2 cm 2 cm or 3 and 3 or 4 and 4 whatever is convenient for you but make sure this focus is exactly in the center of p and c this is called the pole center of curvature this is your focus okay so this is how you draw your convex concave mirror diagram if you do it like this you won't go wrong and then you put your compass point here and then use your compass to draw this arc and make sure you draw these dashed lines because this represents the back the non reflecting side this smooth side without any dashes is the polished reflecting side of the mirror and this line which joins p and c and passes through f of course is called the principal axis how big should your arc be you should draw it a little big so that you know you can uh, as we'll see in the next class the ray diagrams the rays will not go outside the mirror because you don't want the ray going outside the mirror you can obviously extend it yeah if you find 2.5 cm is the best you can use it 2 3 2.5 but make sure these guys are equal that's the important thing is it necessary to draw the principal axis absolutely yes right for most of the diagrams you will see it so you must draw the principal axis and we'll see that in the next class okay now we are doing the basics so make sure you guys practice it the right way the smart way okay so measure these distances then draw the arc how do you draw a convex mirror diagram same thing only it is you know the opposite side so because this is the reflecting side so we tend to you know the circle will be drawn this way now once again this is your principal axis so your horizontal line and make sure you are measuring again equal distances so if let's say this is your pole your focus if this is your focus and this is your center of curvature so this is my pole focus and center of curvature again you can keep you know 2 cm 3 cm whatever you want they basically need to be equal your object will be placed here when you are doing this reflection so the object is going to be placed here the rays will go here and reflect off this mirror and then again you place your compass point over here and draw this arc okay and this time it's a convex mirror so make sure this back portion has the dashed okay so this is the non reflecting side the right just like we draw in a plane mirror and this side is the reflecting side the smooth side without any of these dashes or marking so there you can see this is the convex mirror diagram again focus is exactly between p and c if this is 2 and this is 2.1 your diagram is going to go wrong okay so make it very measured very carefully and accurately and use the compass to draw a nice big arc so uh, there are a lot of light ray rules right and again remember make sure you draw your uh, diagrams like this so you have the center of curvature your focus pole which is exactly the center of the mirror in convex uh, mirror it is this side so here it is in front of the mirror because you know the curvature is this way so obviously your center of curvature will be this way here the center of your compass should lie this because the curvature is this way so this is your center of curvature and your focus so there you can see and so now we are going to talk about light ray rule so for example if you have no some random ray like let's say you have this ray after reflection where will it go or if you have a ray like this where does this ray go or if you have a ray like this going towards the focus where will this reflect off and go so there are some standard rules which make it very easy so that we can use these light ray rules to predict where the image will be located so let's talk about rule number 1 so what does rule number 1 say and we'll do it together for a concave and a convex mirror and there you can see these are your uh, p f and c center of curvature focus and pole so if you have your light ray which is parallel to this principal axis this is rule number 1 where you can see the ray of light again the thin line of light 
which is parallel to the principal axis, where does this ray go? Okay, so what will happen here? This ray after reflection, the rule is if it is parallel to the principal axis, the ray after reflection passes through the focus. So let's draw that here. After reflection, this ray is going to pass through the focus. There you go. Same thing in a convex mirror. It may look complicated, but same thing. But should you do this? The ray of light parallel to the mirror, it passes through the focus. Is this correct? Is this the right answer? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Have I drawn the correct diagram? See, I, I did the same thing as concave. I took the ray of light passing through the focus. So I'm happy to know that most of you think this is wrong because what is the problem here? Mirror looks to be like transparent. The ray of light is going through the mirror. The ray of light is just going through. No, mirror is opaque. So definitely this is wrong. What is going to happen? This ray of light is going to get reflected, bounced back from the mirror, but it will appear to come from the focus. So it appears to come from here and it is reflected off like this. Can you guys see that? So again, parallel ray as if it is coming out from the focus. Here it is actually going through the focus. And make sure this is dotted because this is like a virtual ray, right? Or it is not real. The real ray of light is here because it cannot be behind the mirror. So this is your rule number one. And make sure, please, again, I'll keep repeating. Make sure you guys draw those arrows. Arrows are very important. Next, guys, rule number two. If the ray of light is passing through the center of curvature, so if you take the concave mirror case, this is my center of curvature. This is the focus and pole. If it passes through the center of curvature, what is the rule in a concave, in a spherical mirror? This thing, so you guys know that when it is passing through the center, this ray of light is like a radius. Do you guys agree? Because this is a big circle. So is it not the radius, the line joining the center to the end of the circle? And we know that this radius is going to be perpendicular to, if I draw this tangent here, do you guys agree? If I draw tangent over here, using the circle property we know, or if you guys don't know, you're going to learn that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent drawn at that point. So tangent means what? If I look at this portion of the mirror, this is like a small plane mirror, this tangent mirror, small plane mirror. So if the ray of light is directly falling on this part of the mirror, after reflection, what will happen since it is perpendicular, it will simply go back, right? It is falling on the mirror after reflection, it will simply go back because it is normal incidence. It is falling perpendicular. So it will simply go back along its path. So this is one rule which confuses some people. Why is it going straight back? Because this radius of the circle and the tangent by that theorem, radius and tangent are perpendicular. Tangent means this small part, this actually curved mirror is made up of small, small, tiny mirrors. So if you consider this small part here, this part, this is like a plane mirror. So it is behaving like a plane mirror and just reflecting off the ray back. So that's what's happening. Here. Similarly, what will happen here? If you take in a convex mirror, you have your pole, focus, center of curvature. All you have to remember, if the ray of light is going through or it was going towards, not through, it cannot go through it. It is going towards the center of curvature. Same thing will happen. It will simply reflect back. It will trace back along its path. So just, just like it traces back here, this is going to happen. So these rules make drawing ray diagrams very, very convenient because these are like the standard rays here. So here we say it retraces the same path. Now let's look at rule number three. If the ray of light is passing through the focus of the mirror. So there you can see, we'll start off with concave. This is our center of curvature, the pole here, center of the mirror and focus exactly in the middle. If the ray of light passes through the focus, what will happen to it? This is actually the reverse of rule one. In rule one, what happened? Ray of light parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus. Now we are doing the reverse. If ray of light passes through the focus, what will happen to it? It will become parallel to the principal axis. So 
So that's what's going to happen here. The ray of light passing through the focus after hitting the mirror is going to become parallel to the principal axis, right? So after hitting the mirror, this ray is going to become parallel to the principal axis. So basically rule one and rule three are reverse of each other. Why? Because of reversibility of light. Light will just reverse its path. So if you draw a parallel ray, does it look parallel? I hope. So if you draw a parallel ray, it will pass through the focus. If you make the ray pass through the focus, it will reflect off and become parallel to the principal axis. Clear? Same thing here. The ray which was targeted towards the focus, which is exactly in the center of center of curvature and pole, after reflection, same thing. What's going to happen here? It was meant to go towards the focus. After reflection, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. So just remember, rule one is the reverse of rule three here. There is one more rule. Rule four, if the ray of light is falling exactly at the pole, so the point of incidence is the pole. So what is going to happen here? So if you guys see again, remember this center of curvature, the focus here. So line joining pole and center is like our radius. So that is going to be perpendicular to this tangential mirror here. Do you guys agree? So this radius is going to be perpendicular to this tangent kind of mirror here. So this radius is acting like the normal. So therefore, if we use a compass and let's say we measure this angle and if this angle is 20 degree, this is behaving like a small, tiny plane mirror where this is our normal. PC is the normal. This is our incident ray. So what is going to happen? This ray will reflect off exactly like this having the same angle of reflection as the angle of incidence. So it's going to be 20 degree again. Can you guys see angle of incidence will going to be equal to angle of reflection here. Yes, it will reflect off at the same angle. So the important thing we are using at the pole angle I equal to angle R. Same thing for a convex mirror here. It is incident at the pole. This was your focus and center of curvature, of course. And so because this is acting as the radius, the normal here. So again, the ray of light will reflect off making the same angle. So let's say, suppose the angle here was 30 degree. This is also going to be 30 degrees. Here. So this is like our pole rule where angle of incidence is going to be equal to angle of reflection. But one important thing here, please avoid using this rule in the ray diagrams. Why? Because measuring these angles accurately, like suppose it was 15 degree or 17, then measuring it accurately, even 20, 20, you know, with the compass, the measurements are not that accurate. So the ray diagrams may not be so accurate, but the previous rules never relied on any of the angles. It was just parallel line passing through the pole, uh, sorry, through the focus. Yeah, you had passing through center of curvature gets reflected back. And in the last one, passing through the focus becomes parallel. So these did not use angles. So I would just say avoid using this rule, even though it's valid, avoid it because angles are very hard to measure. Unless they give you a direct question, okay, they ask you some question based on this diagram, then you should do it. But for ray diagrams, this rule is to be avoid for ray diagrams. And we are going to practice the ray diagrams in the next class. So make sure you revise this, watch the previous videos before attending the next class. Now, one very interesting thing is random ray. If you have this kind of random ray, you know, so you can see it is not following any of the rules. Is this ray parallel to the principal axis? So here you have your pole, focus and center of curvature. These are pole, focus and center of curvature. So is this ray parallel? No. So we cannot use rule one. Is it passing through center of curvature? No, we cannot use rule two. Is it passing through the focus? No, we can't use rule three. Is it incident at the pole? No, we can't use rule four. So I like to call this the random ray. Okay. So what do we do in this case? We know that when it is hitting the mirror, uh, where do you guys expect this? This ray is not going to go here because it is not transparent. So that is wrong. So if, if this is kind of a curved mirror, I'm expecting it's going to come something like this. Right? It's going to reflect off like this. Do you guys agree? 
Okay. But how do we draw it accurately? Roughly, this looks correct. Okay, it's hitting here. It should go somewhere here. But is it going to fo focus? Where will it go? So how do we do some more accurate estimate of where this ray is going to go? So again, there, what we are going to do is we are going to use the idea that if at this point of incidence, this is my point of incidence, O. So if I join, all you have to do is join O and C. Just join the point of incidence and the center of curvature because this is like the radius of the circle. So it is definitely going to become again the normal to this small uh, plane mirror here. This is like a small tiny plane mirror because circle is made up of small tiny lines. So you can see that this is basically going to become the normal to this incident ray. So after reflection, you guys can guess it is going to go like this where what you can do is to measure it accurately. Suppose this angle was 25 degrees, then this angle will also be 25 degrees. Do you guys agree? It looks a little larger than that. So maybe let's say I say this is, or let's just say this is 30 degree angle or 40 degrees. Okay. So what you can do is you just join O and C, you measure this angle 40 degree, this angle here equal, and you will get your reflected ray perfectly because OC, the important point is OC is the normal, the line joining the point of incidence to the center of curvature forms the normal. You measure this angle of the incident ray with the normal, you draw that equal angle and boom, you're done. So yes, it passes somewhere between P and F. Same way, what will be the random ray rule over here? Follow the same procedure. Look at the point of incidence. So this is clearly my point of incidence over here, which I can label as O. And this is my pole, pole here, the focus and center of curvature. Again, what is the rule? Join OC first, okay? Make your normal. So we are going to join O and C and extend the line like this. Now, once again, measure this angle. So suppose this angle turns out to be 30 degrees. You draw the same angle here because you know after reflection, it's going to angle I will equal to angle R. So this is going to be same angle. Here. So do spherical mirrors obey the laws of reflection? Does angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection? The answer is yes, as you can see here, because a spherical mirror is made up of tiny, tiny, small parts or tiny plane mirrors. So definitely it is following the laws of reflection. You just have to draw that normal OC, you join that, and there you can see angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection, and there you're done. And another important thing you guys need to know, which will uh, be useful in the next class, what are the types of images? So images can be divided into two types, real image, virtual image, we'll see this more in the next class. The important thing is real image can be taken on a screen. So just like when you go to the theater to watch a movie, they are projecting on a screen, so it can be captured on a screen. It is a real image. Real images are always inverted upside down. Why don't you see the uh, inverted image in the movie? Because they invert the projector, projected thing, right? And light rays actually meet at the point. So real means the light rays are actually meeting to produce the image. Whereas virtual image, it cannot be taken on a screen. So real image on a screen, virtual cannot be taken. Real image is always upright or we say erect. These guys are upside down, inverted. Inverted means upside down. And light rays appear to meet. So in virtual image, the light rays don't actually meet. They seem to be com coming from a point. So we'll see that. So this is an important thing you should remember for the next class. So there we have come to the end of the topic. Uh, of this uh, introduction to the reflection by spherical mirrors. Hope you guys enjoyed this class. Please take a look at the previous videos and revise this topic because in the next class, we are going to be practicing ray diagrams. You can also watch, there's a video on that, but I'm going to show you practically how to use the rules and remember to practice how to draw convex and concave mirror diagrams. And do check out the other courses on our website. We have physics, chemistry, biology, and maths for CBSE class eight, nine, and 10. So guys, if you haven't taken the other subjects, what are you waiting for? Do take them and do share it with your friends. Uh, we also have ICSE courses, physics, chemistry, biology, and maths for classes eight, nine, and 10. Once again, do check out the other courses on our website and please do share it with your friends.
And if you want to learn coding, we have Python programming, we have Java coding. So all these awesome courses there for you. And we have physics and chemistry with the Cambridge IGCSE, which is the international board. So make sure you share our website and our Android app with your friends. And also you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We keep posting interesting content there as well. So hope you enjoyed this physics class and keep learning.